Absolutely. Was that place just not open yesterday then? Good morning, boys. You're new. I make my own way. It's, it's all. I always have and always will. You sure about that, fam? Ooh, what's this? Money gained to real. The sight of bullet holes stirs something in you, making you forget the lieutenant's surname. Look the fading this. marks are too degraded to draw any forensic conclusions. Just chips in the sandstone. They look pretty ancient. Kim, look, bullet holes. Where? Point to the chips in the wall. Someone has been shot. Where cops, you should solve it. There? Those are old. What do you mean old? These bullets were fired during the revolution, over half a century ago. They do not warrant investigation. Okay. What can you tell me about the revolution? Not much. I don't have a fresh perspective on it. Shall we go? I gained 5 XP. It's totally worth I wonder how I'm meant to get the thing back out of the water. This coin operated viewer is facing south. The instruction manual says to insert 25 centimes and pull the handle while looking inside. Then use the focus knob to zoom in if necessary. Use the focus knob. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? I spoke with the lineman at the roundabout. On the contrary, officer. There are yet camioners you have not talked to. And don't look so surprised. In a time like this, it would be strange if Wild Pines didn't have eyes on the harbour. They must have someone in an overlook position near the gates. I suggest you go back and canvass for more suspects. Interesting. Literally couldn't see anyone else to interact with, but whatever. Go back in the apartment building now. It's early. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. A poor communard, from the looks of it. Do I have? Do you have? Let's go. We don't have a reason. Okay. Oh, thought that might be different. Sh shoes. This door has been closed with a padlock, but no reply. It's locked because I don't have the ability. Flip up glasses. actual organ of Martinez communism. It's a radical perspective. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> so one logic, but lose one authority. I'm also losing one suggestion, am I? Losing my suggestion. Uh, can I change my t-shirt then? Trying to, try to not have minuses where possible. Alright, we have. 
This is all very strange. Okay, but I want to interact with this. Okay, I'll just, just not do anything then. Hmm. Also can't seem to actually do anything with the door. Great. Alright, so she told me that there's someone else to speak to. But there didn't seem to be. Whoever this was did not return home, seemingly. Nothing new to interact with. A row of mugs sits on the shelf. Okay, leave that. Leave the racist mugs to their own devices. Try to sneak up. Nope. Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. But it's not an ordinary wall. It's not. Did you buy me gun? Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Can I not get up there? Right, there's no way for me to get up, is there? Like, and round that way. Oh, not at all right. Ruination has come. The broken arches betray the once grand history of this building. It oh, towered guess, over what the harbour. A great force from the northeast fired into the city. Heavy artillery shelled the coastline. Fired from the water. A straight shot into Revachol. The tenement acted as a defensive wall against the worst of the shelling until it was destroyed and they had a direct firing line. Those arches acted as support for something greater than what you see now. Only three stories stand where nine to twelve once did. Restoration has failed. What the shilling took out was never rebuilt. A fleet, the combined armies of Occident and Grad, with Mesk volunteers, a five-nation army, hundreds of vessels. They massed airships further down in the Bay of Revachol. The artillery was so powerful. The ships not only required gyroscopic stabilization, they were anchored into the ocean floor as well. Many are still there to this day. Uh, I love gaining if you XP. squint, you can just barely see the shadow on the water, far in the northeast. Cannons still ready to placate Revachol. Coalition warship Archer can shoot 50 shells a minute on 20 co-aligned archers. They will reach the city. In 58 seconds. Hey Kim, do you know who shelled our city? The coalition. But that was a long time ago. I think we should move on. It's chilly up here. <laughs> he doesn't chilly. like talking politics of this kind. Time to go. Finish thought. Ooh, the piggies have learned how to saunter up staircases. I didn't think you could do that with hooves. You're in but trouble now. Here you are. We, we cops don't like closed doors or unreachable perches. Or people having high ground on us. That's right, we were wrong. Yeah, I can see that. Cool mutations. She crosses her arms. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. Is that heavy fuel oil? Red dyed heavy fuel oil intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. What did he think I was using? Aquarelles? <laughs> Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamrock. She really did it. She's proud of it too. Fume, fumes are bad for you, okay. That's some clever cultural commentary. Something to think about next time you're driving around in your pretty little piggy carriage. Can we not ask, do you have my gun? 
Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? I ain't no snitch. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make... Dang it. A ball of crap slap in the wind. The door is locked. The chain's near. Someone lives back here. <clears throat> Hello again, officer. Okay, alright, well, you're not saying anything new. Did Cindy steal the gun? Someone's been sleeping here recently. Cindy? Question mark. Enough calls last several winters. Beans. Oh, I keep. Do that. God ass. I entitled. Minus one reaction speed. Hello again, officers. Is that have bed in the cold room, yours? My Ooh. Not only have you found my address, you've discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. Really? You're a miner? Do you have a real home? Does anyone in a city like this? She replies wistfully looking around. If her. there's pain about any particular home she's lost, she's buried it deep. Fortified herself against it. Really? You're a miner? Yes. I keep hoping a shaft will collapse on me, but somehow it never happens. It's not the nicest place, but it, I guess it'll have to do. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. Like me. Right now, I'm doing nothing at all. Cool, I have Shoot, questions. piggy. It's what you do. Dang it, why can't I ask you about me gun? In. The store is open. A young girl with chubby red cheeks waves at you, smiling. Her nose is red from the cold. Hi. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? She stamps her feet to feel warmer. What kind of store is this anyway? Is it okay if I ask you some questions? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. What is a book? I know all these things. You're fooling nobody. Don't you sass me. <laughs> Sir, are you okay? You've been standing here silently for a while now. Is it okay if I ask you some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. What is your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register, or organising the stock. The girl gazes at the window, then suddenly drops her eyes wide as if calling something. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. And you're standing out here in the cold because... I'm signalling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. A sudden gush of wind turns the pages of the books on the counters. She covers her face, smiling. But she's cold. You're cold, can I help you in some way? Kind of you to offer, sir. She doesn't know what else to say. What could you do to help her anyway? I should have a word with the shop owner, um, maybe? Such a good trooper you are, already learning the value of hard work. Pat her head. I could help, 
but brutally disarming the free market. <laughs> oh no, no, sir. I'm happy to help Mum by luring in customers. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. Luring in customers, by the way. Shouldn't you be at school or something? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mum keep this place running. <clears throat> Isn't going to school more important than this? Mum says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. How's the business going? Mum says it's peachy. She was a little peachy. afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. <gasps> Behind her, the window has been boarded up. You sense the boards creaking, twisting for a second, and some kind of doubt in her tense shoulders. Cursed? Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Ass up. <laughs> Bankrupt, say nothing. Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. That sounds rather serious. I should probably look into this. Narrow your eyes and look through the cracking boards on the window. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case. But I don't see much more to look into here. The lieutenant makes a note, isn't Yes. It? Please do also look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games are there, sir. How does this curse manifest itself? It does not manifest <laughs> itself in any way. It does not exist. I liked it better when we were talking about whether it's appropriate to stand out in the freezing weather. But Kim, the plasmic manifestations. No such thing. <laughs> uh, anything else you wanted to talk about, sir? Hmm, sugar chin. Enough of the curse for now. Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead. What is this crime business? Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. Okay, I get it. Crime murder gets the people going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a puzzle too. You can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. I'm a policeman myself, by the way. You don't look much like a policeman. Okay, then maybe I'm not a policeman. Or should stop being one. Huh? Eh, well, what does a cop look I didn't like? Didn't mean then? to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. She points to the book cover, of which you see a strapping, vespertine officer who stands grimly over the body of a dead woman. I used to be exactly like that Mullen guy. Then I decided to live a little. You know, nobody actually looks like this guy in the picture. That's just the stupid fancy of a man. It's not your body that's important in police work, anyway. At your point of your head. Wow, look at the guy. I'll never be as good as Mullen. Hmm, I actually have other questions. Head? Yes. No, it's your soul. Your, your blue, blue soul. soul. Not head, child. Heads. Soul. The Mullen guy lacks the hamplement. Who could respect that face? Not even drawn correctly. He lacks soul. Flexibility, there are millions of different people out there and you have to get into their heads sometimes. You've got to be the killer to catch the killer. Isn't that very dangerous? Policemen live and breathe danger, little girl. Mullen obviously lacks the chameleonic skill. Unlike you, sir. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for you. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. Like in the books. So she's cold, afraid of the curse, composure challenging. Okay, I'm going to deduce something now. What's the it's the type of book where there's a rich lady and she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. She smiles and thought, perhaps imagining herself in that situation. Or there could be a story about a poor lady getting a rich man. It's about man and lady business, sir. What about what about when both men are bad? What about a book where the man and lady business doesn't work out at all? Maybe some about other books. Famous people. Oh, kings and queens and generals of old, or artists and writers. Or musicians, those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. She scratches her cold red cheek, then continues. I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. Reading those doesn't make the readers more famous, does it? But it does make the famous people more famous. Famous sounds delicious. Maybe someone will write a book about me one day. Famous for vain people, I have better things to do. Famous people sound like a bunch of dogs. Annette's expression remains ever so helpful, but she doesn't say anything. 
<laughs> you heard me only loses wasted time with that garbage. Never mind, I literally have nothing else. Okay. So. Let's go for a composure, why not? The girl keeps her hands folded, hidden. Why is that? Hey, why do you keep your hands folded? What do you mean, sir? She looks wary. She knows where this is going. You don't need to be worried. I'm here to help. You can show them to me. You don't need to be worried. She looks around anxiously. Her hands remain folded in front of her. She doesn't want to show them. The lieutenant stands by, looking at the two of you with little interest. A facade of true professionalism. He is far more intrigued by the situation than his poise reveals. It's okay. She brings out her reddened hands. Her nails frayed, nearly chewed down to the flesh. You bite your nails. And you knew this from me keeping my hands folded? She shoots you a suspicious glare. There were a few other hints. It's super simple for a detective such as myself. Well, that proves nothing. Anyone could do an easy deduction like that. Her eyes flash with defiance. She's not impressed. She actually is impressed. This is more like a defensive reflex. One more? Bet I can figure out why you bite your nails. I got a few reasons in mind. You think so? Fine, do bad. Does there something about me? Go for this. She nods, half provocative, half enthusiastic. You're her because your mother and the pressure she's putting on you. Rats have been nibbling on your fingers, child labor is dismal working conditions. Chewed on nails means you're recycling your body material. It's an intense dedication to the way of business. There are no riches without personal sacrifice. But you're uptight because of your mother and the pressure she's putting on you. Maybe so, sir. Okay, I know it's a bad habit, and I shouldn't. <laughs> Either way, another ace deduction by the number one detective in town. It was okay, sir. She's still got a rebellious There's more that can be achieved here. Ask her to do the same. You think so? Fine. Do better. Then do something about me. You're quite sober. She snaps back quickly. The lieutenant does not flinch at the comment. He does not flinch even a single bit. He is intensely not flinching. It takes effort. And I'm having a grand time. I sure hope you are, sir. She rubs her red nose. There she stands, swaying on her feet, assaulted by the early spring breeze. She smiles at you. The whole situation suddenly feels familiar. There's something you're missing. What are you missing here? 83%, come on, we failed one of these. We've got to get this one. Because you know yeah. each other. She's been talking to you so openly because you've talked before. On second thought, maybe I shouldn't remember. Hang on, so you know me, we've met before. Yes, I stand in this spot all the time. She sways back and forth on her feet. You've been running around all week without your shirt on, sir. Apologising to everyone. I don't really understand what you've done wrong. Did I ever talk to you? Of course. You've stopped by a few times. You certainly look better than the last time I saw you. What do you mean better? I look like shit. Thanks, I'm trying. Yeah, I can see. You don't have party eyes anymore. Party eyes. Yes, of course. That makes sense. I'm not surprised children have seen you running around <laughs> with party eyes on. He thinks. Not at all. Party eyes? You know, like a cat in the dark. All big and wide-eyed. <laughs> it certainly looks odd on a man. She giggles. The swiveling eyes of a loony drug addict. That is what she meant. You were probably going into. Fuck yeah. You should get some party eyes right now. Snap those sequins on you, boy. The girl doesn't know what she's talking about. Forget about this. Don't leave us hanging like that, man. Open yourself to the experiences of the world. Expand your consciousness with Why amphetamines. Didn't you tell me you knew me to begin with? I didn't know I had to do that. I don't really like this detective that doesn't give any more conclude. Thanks, I've learned something about myself today. I'm glad I could help you, sir. Okay, bye. For, bye. See you around, uh, Annette. Let's go in the bookstore, I guess. Sports magazines. All right. Hello. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Plaisance. Be welcome and pleased 
take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. But before we go out, you seem to hit. You seem to be well off. Can you give me some money? I feel it won't be up in a moment to ask Leah. Sir, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I certainly will not give you money. I would be doing you a grave psychic disfavor. One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you dependent. Certainly there are good things to be said about dependence. It would forge ties between us working people, good practice for fighting a common enemy. You don't understand me. I am powerful feudal lord. I demand tribute. This is about traditions. Damn, you're right. What kind of business relationship would that kick start? Excuse me, I don't even know why I said that. A lapse of professionalism that does not represent my values. Now, hey there. Sounds like someone isn't taking responsibility for the energy they bring into this space. Fighting enemy. My philosophy is everyone just getting along. Where we go? Okay, yeah. So you're the only of the store. I am the proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Her voice, high pitched, sounds familiar. You've talked to her before through the door. She has fine tuned her voice to find the most welcoming approach for attracting new customers. It doesn't work. Your daughter is the one standing outside of the store, right? Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me. Was she at her post, doing her job like a proper girl? Yes, of course. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes. Great. On a scale of one to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? Her opinion of her daughter depends on how well she lured you into the store. Ten. She's certainly very polite and helpful. My precious. Her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. Annette is quite the trooper. She's great. She's a great value add. She's a great value add? I don't know. I'm here to disseminate the free market and abolish hard labor. All this pressure has made her really anxious. You know she's been chewing her nails. God, ugh. I told her not to do that. It's such a disgusting habit. She'll get over it. Anxiety is a part of life. That is not the way to handle that. A part of hers too. Clearly. I don't think she can do anything about it. She can, if she has enough willpower. This is what's called growing pains. Life isn't easy. Life doesn't give breaks. Come on, ma'am. It's obvious she can't do anything about it. You are placing an unnecessary burden on a young child. What you're doing is wrong, even I know that. And I usually don't know anything. That is true, and obviously the will of the market... <laughs> But maybe make an exception for your daughter. Yes, actually, it's super all right for kids to chew, chew their hands off. Forget I said that. She stands stiff and severe, silently fuming. Ten or so seconds pass without change. This is a person coming to terms with a new reality. One where they are wrong. It's not easy. She's looking for one. But there simply aren't any good arguments for being an <laughs> asshole. Oh no. Hold on. I need to invite her inside and apologize. She must be freezing out there. There. I don't know what to say to you. My husband, he tries to teach me business lessons. I have what my mother called a dull mind. All this stress. She stops, but her mouth keeps moving. It sounds like both the husband and the mother treat her the way she treats Annette. You're like Annette to your husband and mother. Oh, well, my mother was horrible, of course. Absolutely perverse energies around that person. But my husband... She shakes her head. My husband is completely different, of course. And is this husband then its father? Yes, my husband is a successful entrepreneur east of the river. If only he were more involved in the business we're running up here. No matter... Soon we'll both be off for Grand Caron. Grand Caron? Wait, Grand Caron, what's that? It's a proper place to live. One of the most peaceful neighbourhoods east of Jamrock. You may know it for its massive housing projects. Most of the buildings are empty at the moment. It's a great opportunity to get ahead of the crowds. Better times ahead for sure. And your husband's also involved with the bookstore? He made the initial investment. Since then, he's been what you might call... Silent partner. 
Super silent. Almost inaudibly so. Uh, is she an only child? Yes, I'm afraid so. A real treat she is. It would be nice if she had... No, we couldn't have afforded more children, really. Not in this economy. Of course, yes, in this economy. Exactly. She told me she doesn't go to school anymore. She's been too busy, helping me here. So she studied at home this trimester. This is a temporary solution, of course. I assure you, I of all people understand the importance of education. She will be back in school the moment the store takes off. And hell freezes over? Hmm. Never mind. It's not a good topic to get into. All right, I had something else. The woman me. looks aloof. Her features now. much softer. Occasionally, she glances at her daughter's silhouette. Right, well, at least we managed to get the daughter back inside. I'm sorry, sir. I can't talk right now. I'm very busy with my homework. I have so much homework now. You just can't win. Out of the rain and into the gutter. Math. It's really difficult. Like, really. They say you need it to get rich. Better than standing outside in the cold, I guess. Oh, oh, I found something while you were away. I thought this would fit you. Like, thanks for helping out. <laughs> Not me. The city, I mean. Like a detective does. It's a fedora? A detective hat? Okay, I get it. I can look just like Dick Mullen, except I'm an actual police officer. Yes, I bet it looks good on you. Really serious. Right, I have to get back to my homework now. Before Mum notices. Man, this is hard. Okay, bye. See you around, then. Cool, we, ha we have a freaking fedora. Let's go. One in book smart. Let's, let's freaking go. We, we, have, we have peaked. Absolute peak gaming. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Nothing. Why aren't you browsing the books? Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Engage, uh, ex engage, examine the strange trinket. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. This is a traditional Seminese ward, meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. We know the Seminese. Inhabitants of Ile de Fantôme, the Seminine Islands, that aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. Hmm. The curtains remain shut before you. Pull up the curtains. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? This is about the curse. That's why you're afraid. No, it's just a storeroom for the employees. I told you. Now, please step away from the curtains. Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? like anyone was killed there she stops abruptly and her hand flies over her mouth baffled by her own bloodless I'm sorry i don't mean to be so impolite just please don't go there i can't allow that i don't care make things worse and unleash the powers but i sense this place calling me okay i don't care I'm just no please just talk to me officer come here and let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme Talking is always good. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you. <laughs> Rip them apart you. this time for real. Alright, so there's defo something something going on there. We like to see that. Yes. I really would love to land the inland empire.
This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Oh, look through the shelf. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. These three things are very important to the working class mind. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. Interesting. Various paranatural books still litter the shelf. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. Look at the map around. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the river Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of San Baptiste, swallowed up into the mega city. They sound rich to you. This is Rivershall East. Hudon. It's somewhere to live. Not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg. It's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City. It's the worst. It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait. There it is. North of Jamrock. The strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbour. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have. But it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world. You're still alive. It's not really a map. It's a tourist thing. A picture postcard with buildings on it. Drawn from an isometric perspective, a date in the upper right corner says 48. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of an industrial harbor, even the whirling in rags there. I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, <laughs> you could scarcely afford them. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. You seem to underrespect resources, but okay. Yes, yes. Are you interested or not? <laughs> Steal it instead. No, I'm sure I'll just buy it. Always good to be informed of your surroundings. Actually, having the map is genuinely valuable. Oh. Oh, that's going to be in there. Isn't it? Right. So, yeah, there is something to interact with in there. <clears throat> Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Terrible name for a bookstore, by the way. Let's be square. Why are you so uptight about the curtains? I just want to know what's on the other I side. I already told you. It's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. She recites it like it's a poem. Or like she's playing a role she's grown tired of. All right, why do you have a ward protecting it's it? just for decoration. She waves under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight-lipped smile, then something okay, breaks. Okay, fine. It's just because this place is cursed, just like everyone says. They don't call it the Dooms commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? Take it easy. You've broken her resistance. Pushing her further will gain nothing. How does the curse manifest? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. Shiver runs through the woman as though she looks around the dimly lit store. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains again. Didn't, didn't that curtain just move? 
Okay, I'm a little confused. What does that mean? Everyone knows that all the previous companies in this building have sooner or later declared bankruptcy, and their malicious spirits are still here, feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence, as if I was unwanted here. We about to go Ghostbusters on this? Sounds familiar. Strange. I feel unwanted too. What does this mean? Truly so? Perhaps the dark energies are leeching off you. You shouldn't stay in the store too long. It may be dangerous. Why don't you just tell me right away about the curse? It's not good to talk about the curse. Not in detail. The negativism. It's dangerous. Talking about the void wraiths angers them. Wow. Void wraiths. You have new words. Hmm. Have you saw help from anyone? Yes. I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear it's not enough. Is your pendant part of the wards as well? Oh, this. No, it's a special Hymian amulet blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Okay. Desert pygmy shamans. That sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. Would you like me to take the case? I could investigate to see if the case is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. My liege, you know what this case calls for? A paradetective. <laughs> Very high. 97, let's do it. Sliver up to her, <laughs> you silver-tongued fiend. Show her what world-class perfidy looks like. Mama, I've come here to help. I've handled paranormal situations before. Are you sure? Don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. I sense the psychic emanations from afar. The sleeper beyond calls out. I've returned from the void a pet a paradetective from a long line of paradetectives. You're no paradetective. You look nothing like one. And you're clearly a drinker. You look like one. The lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. Go ahead then. Rock her world, he thinks. I admit, some notes. I admit, I've had my fair share of drinks, but only because the spectral realm is parapsychologically taxing. It's necessary for the dr to drink the spirits in order to connect to the void. How do you know all this? Here we go. Your wards brought me here in the first place. The sense of me blood also runs through me. I am the Void Revenant. I have powers to debat all the bad energies. You're part Simonese. Oh, it means our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. <laughs> but I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You are certain you can help us? Keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. No problem whatsoever. Your family is safe. The Phantoms are no match for me. If you promise, good officer, then... You might be our last hope. Do you swear it? A hand on your heart, on my honour. Thank you, sir. <laughs> There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The entity. The entity! Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. Of course, the entity. For I sense its presence. You have? The entity takes the form of a woman. A witch, probably. <laughs> I've suspected that she must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you know that she lives inside the chimney? Chimney, the passage between heaven and hell, of course. Yes, that chimney is part of the building's <laughs> central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. We did it. We we turned it into Twin Peaks. This is this is the best thing ever. This is the best th this is the best game ever. I'm wearing a fedora. We've turned it into Twin Peaks. This is incredible. This is peak gaming. You will you will never see anything better than this. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? 
Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Absolute oh, magic. Please do return to me after you've looked round. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. What you discover? Probably just some office space. Don't be scared. Absolutely, well, absolutely incredible. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to... You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little Sebanese wards. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. Oh! She tries to look away. Absolutely incredible. Ghostly silhouettes. A vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Semenese trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. A locker though, the key. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's <gasps> eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. Uh, Kim, maybe you should go first. Detective, you're the one in charge. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. What is this place? Dude, his hand stares at the dusty training equipment. It's an adventure. It's the netherworld beyond the veil. Looks like a gym to me. I think this may be the Antwerp boxing club for young athletes. I think you're right. Though it looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. What if there is a reason why no one's been here for ages? Yes, because it's closed. No need to look for supernatural explanations where well, a banal one will do. Now let's move on, shall we? I love it. I love it. We've turned it into Twin Peaks. Absolute peak gaming. Shot put ball. Citrus fruits. The rest is worn off. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. <laughs> Lift them. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Why does it feel so familiar? Look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weights may fall off. Better not touch it then. What kind of horrible person would just remove the collars? It should be a felony. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating. But it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. Is it familiar because I'm a weightlifter? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers. Your bruised knee against the mat. And a whistle. The feeling then, of God. The feeling is gone. It's just a memory. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lift the weight. Worn out war bars, they look unsafe. Yo, this is so cool. The hallway is blocked. Looks like the remains of the 24th window repair shop. Large demijohn full of strange liquid. Wild animals stare you in the dark, stuffed and melted. Oh gosh, we're actually getting like creepy. Airship roots covered in spider webs, they remind you of blades. A naked mannequin torso in a strange yellow colour. Oh. Yes, I'll take that rail, please. A board. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but
but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. It's back to photos. The photo collage <clears throat> depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, boreal dvorg, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine. A much needed respite from our own world. A pinned postcard reads, These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins, casting wax-based magic. I also didn't realize this would be different. Um, a pinned postcard reads, The heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes unearthed from its sun drifting through the universe. Translucent Welkins, with organs shining under their skin, and even Ether Welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? You should adopt one of those Welkins as your persona. <laughs> no longer a mere man, but a Welkin. One of the Welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. Examine the Welkin. It's Vara Hamira, a high Welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin. Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Who are these creatures who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. Wait, this is an this is this has been educational, let's move on. Mm hmm Political commentary. That one has a great beard too. And the town nods at the Welkin's facial hair. Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. They said the thing! It's so mad. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Just look at those details. So much effort. And for what? All gone. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like sprint, daily minimi, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. Minimi stands for a mini-meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. Keep reading, what happened? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule filament for details. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, Wirral untethered, and heat death of the universe. Yo, this is so cool. This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. This is where the memory should go. 
Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Hmm. <clears throat> Blue velvet, soft to the touch. David Lynch reference. Come on. Emma's outlaw. Ooh. Oh, this is so cool. What was that item I picked up? Like? Fragile production schedule. Now the filament contains information that can be used. Reading the thing. Oh, this is so cool! Also, I've now got the map, so like I can I can actually use the map now. That's pretty sick. All right, sweet. That's actually awesome. That was well worth the ninety cents. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Have you stirred the ghost of the doomed commercial area from its rest? Could this be its dismembered heart beginning to flutter? The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good morning, Fortress Accident en rue de Saint-Gazelaine. This is East Inflindian Repeater Station 1. Please repeat, is this the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. Yes. Is that the production schedule? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. Password. Of course it would have a password. That's why there's a human administrator involved. You should ask her for a hint. Is it my birthday? This is police. Please open the thing. Can you give me a hint? No. A hint system is not part of the protocol for repeater stations. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder for trust accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. I'm afraid we are not doing that, unless we want to. Now, can you please repeat the password? Still no. Received. I will register. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up. For trust accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Are you a machine or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. Yvonne? She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Yvonne, my partner tells me that you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid. Where are you? How did you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Inflindian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are for this accident. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle, surrounded by a wall of radios. Doesn't it get lonely, sitting there all by herself? Lonely? <laughs> Why would it get lonely? I get to talk to people all day. That's why she does this. Now, please tell me if there's anything else I can do for Fortress Accident. Is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to? One moment. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive call-in radio games. That's what the catalog says. This is so cool. That's not bad. Wow, so conceptual. And what's this? What's that? This interactive radio call in radio game. Any other questions? Thank you and goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the free. Nothing happens. 
Interesting. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very pedantic. History classes, students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. Ooh. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. Some unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. Perhaps the web is comprised of radio stations all lead back to one red heart titled the Game Master Frequency. A note says this one can listen in on any station it wants. Someone very important, the leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the Game Master's frequency. Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like all of this is gone, left unrealized. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. This My is so God. Cool. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. The schedule. I know Doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Your flashlight slides over. Some of the writing has the handwriting is only partly legible. Mm. <clears throat> okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Looks like counterintelligence program? No, that's not it. I think it looks like one of those popular pen and paper role playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it. Make it work on radio computers. Utter madness, he thinks. As a compliment. <laughs> Through call-in stations, none of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the game master frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Königstein. You know, places with industry. Not in Revachol West, among the ruins. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an interisolary game before. We just don't have the technology. Indeed, those Welkins are a dead giveaway. The role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Wii World board game, with heat death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. Mm. This game is too good to be left unfinished. No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Indeed, it's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... It's too late for that, I'm afraid. He say he's looking around the derelict room, the pipes howl and the rat carcasses and the rat caresses okay, the Okay, let's keep moving. Maybe it was the case. I really hope I find the password. The wind howls. Gain some magnesium, that's dope. A, bit, a polar see bear fridge. A terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost, and the bear's eyes are glowing red. The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? What is this thing? It looks like a giant bear. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued 
to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Relax, Kim. It's a fridge. Of course. Just a giant ice bear shaped fridge. He relaxes his hand, his face bathed in a harsh light. Let's really. take a look inside. Oh. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Take the note. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Examine one of the ice cream wrappers. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. What is a giant bear shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. Are they trying to sell ice cream from this hypen car from the cyber carnival? What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. Red snaky cable. The fridge buzzes with So what's the note? The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? The lieutenant leans closer to read the crumpled note over your shoulder. This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Read the note. Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere safe. You'll find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Suliswaf. It belongs inside a radio computer, storing its memory. It's like a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of your disco tapes, <laughs> only for a computer. Looks like someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. That's a plausible hypothesis. Who is the illegitimate ginger? Really? You don't have a single guess? Hmm. You mean Kuna? Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on the filament memory. Even if he doesn't know what to do with it, he'd probably try to pawn it for speed, based on our encounter. You have any idea where the frozen ice cream maker could be? I don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. An ice cream maker. The frost didn't unplug. A flashlight casts a strange shadow as a hidden doorway here. Two rusty rifles are hidden above piping they look inoperable. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. A few bricks have fallen off. Revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Where are we? Look around the secret room. Look, there's a hole in the wall. Shine a light in the hidden apartment. It seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. Cache. Look inside the there. There is, well. yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. You <laughs> okay. I do. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spider webs. Rummaging around, you find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim. Are these any good? Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bolt-action model with a fine woodstock, in better cosmetic order than the others. Take it. You're a police officer. Police officers carry guns. This one looks nice. That's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. It might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. 
So, like, we now have an inoperable gun. A broken bubble grave from ages past. It's four shot ball action with each rifle and a wooden frame. Interesting. Frozen ice cream maker that's still running. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice beer fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Two cables are plugged. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? It's black. It's not like it's the red one. <laughs> because it's black, the color of a measurable cosmos. I don't know why I'm forgetting to do things for that The reason. lieutenant raises his brow. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting Brad's crack open the lid. you slip your fingers under the frozen lid but the ice is too cold for you to get a good grip if you want to try again then you need to have the pry bar in your hand equip the pry bar by going <laughs> to the tools tab in your inventory from there you can equip it to a held slot oh yeah i can't access the tools while i'm weird that we're getting a tutorial like now right like one drama. Okay, tools. Right, bar, equip. This orange machine is uh, dead still. It has a hand strong enough. ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. It's all gone now. You'll never become a poet or an entrepreneur. I try it? Like this orange the... machine is oh, dead no. still. The ice squeaks beneath wow. the pry bar. You think you've got the bar jammed in there pretty well, but the lid simply won't budge. You see the pry bar's metal handle bending right before... Yeah, well, that's a good pry bar. I'm not criticizing it, but this ice cream maker is frozen shut. It takes an advanced tool to get it open. Where do we get one? I have no idea, officer. This ice cream maker isn't important enough to requisition a special tool. Sooner or later, you will stumble upon a tool mighty enough. Then we will know what's in this mysterious ice cream maker. Dang it. Only the red cable and electric sizzle. The room is slightly quiet. That's very annoying. I really wanted to crack open the ice cream maker. 